Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. Today, we are going to talk about social linguistics or language and society. We are from group 3. My name is Vania Dominica and I'm working together with my friends Amelia Rosada and Arif Pradana. There are 12 topics that will be discussed in this PowerPoint and they are First, the notion of a language dialect and accent, from high to low, speech versus writing, charting phonological variation, phonological variation in British English, social networks, language and sex, power talking, change in language styles, multilingual and communities, and last, pigeons and creoles. Now, let's move on to the first topic. The first topic is the notion of a language. A notion of a language cannot be defined geographically, cannot be equated with nationality, and also a language should not be defined by the mutual intelligibility of its speakers. Nationality is a vague notion that has nothing to do with the language someone uses. Many Russian Jews, for example, consider themselves Jewish but speak Russian, and like a Dutchman and a German who are considered to speak distinct language, there are no objective linguistic criterion can be applied. Dutch and German are structurally alike. Faced with this dilemma, social linguists prefer to start with the notion of a speech community rather than a language and they define a speech community as any group of people who consider that they speak the same language. Next is dialect and accent. Within a speech community, there is a considerable language variation. The speech of its member varies according to many factors, including geographical location, age, occupation, socioeconomic status, ethnic group, and sex. The most obvious type of variety in speech community is the use of different dialects. A dialect is usually associated with a particular geographical area, such as the Geordi and Cockney dialects of English, which are spoken in Tyneside and London, respectively. The term dialect refers to far greater difference than mere pronunciation, while an accent refers to only a difference in pronunciation. The next topic is from high to low. Each native speaker is usually ordered from several different language styles, sometimes called registers, which vary according to the topic being discussed, the formality of the event, and the media used, like speech, writing, or sign. Adapting language to suit the topic is a fairly straightforward matter. Many activities have a specialized vocabulary. If you are playing a ball game, you need to know what zero is a duck in cricket, love in tennis, and nil in soccer. The same person might deliver any of the following two sentences, depending on the circumstance. For example, I should be grateful if you would make less noise. Please be quiet and shut up. Here, the utterance range from a high or formal style down to a low or informal one, and the choice of a high or low style is partly a matter of politeness. Next topic is speech versus writing. Speech and writing are surely having a different in a way of delivering. Not only that, there are typical differences between spoken and written language. They can be summed up in the following table. Spoken Spoken is consists of more than one participants. It is inexplicit, repetitive, fragments, symbol structures, and concrete. Spoken use common vocabulary, while written is written by single writer, explicit, non-repetitive, full of sentence, elaborate structures, and abstract. Written form is used less common vocabulary. 
Spoken language typically involves the characteristic in the left-hand column of the table above and written language in the right-hand column. So each can borrow from the other. Several of these features overlap with the formality in formality scales, with speech containing informal features and written language formal ones. Spoken and written characteristics then are another facet of speech styles which efficient speaker and writers control with ease. Charting phonological variation. A study found that lower middle class speakers are more consciously aware of speech as an indicator of social class and are making effort to improve their status. The study of differing pronunciation can reveal social stratification and also social aspiration since people sometimes try to talk like those they would like to emulate. Phonological variation in British English. Another study that been conducted in Norwich found that different level working class use of ing is different from one another. For example, the lower working class don't really use ing, they just use in, walking, talking, singing. Social networks. In a study conducted by two British linguists, Jim and Leslie Miroy in Belfast, found that people tend to match their talking to their social network. Networks can be of high density when the same people tend to work, play, and live together. On the other hand, they can be of low density when people only have a small amount of contact with any one network in that they may live in one area, work in another, and travel elsewhere for their social life. Language and sex Women were found to use ing more often than men. This suggests that change from above love of term for change of which speakers are consciously aware may well be initiated by mainly women but in recent years particularly among employed women the difference between man and woman's speech appear to be diminishing now we can move on to the next topic power talking please take a look at the dialogue between speaker a and b powerful speakers typically control the topic interrupt others, and demand explicit explanations. Quite often, as we can see from the example, the powerful speaker, in this case Speaker A, dominates the conversation and flattens other speakers' confidence. Power talking is used by either sex, but it is used by male more. Not only that, men also use more direct orders. In a study of doctor-patient interaction in the USA, Men used explicit commands in about one-third of the directives. For example, take off your shoes. Whereas women prefer using joint actions in giving orders. For example, maybe we ought to do is stay with the dose you're on. Next, we are going to talk about change in language styles. A change in language styles likely mirrors a change in social relationships. An example of a change of this type occurred in the gradual meaning change in the two forms of the pronoun you in European languages. Originally in Latin, there is a singular form tu and a plural form vos. For some reason, vos came to be used as a polite form to address a person in authority or as a mark of respect, which later became a customary for working class person to address upper classmen as vos and to be addressed as tu by upper classes, and continued to address one another as tu. Gradually, as feudalism died out, people stopped feeling such respect for those in power, and instead, they felt remote from them. Vos came to be a mark of non-intimacy and distant relation. And tu came to be thought of indicating intimacy, companionship, and solidarity. A power to solidarity shift is taking place worldwide, in that people have become friendlier to one another and are less impressed by authority. Next, we are going to talk about multilingual communities. In some cultures, a changed social situation is marked by a change in the actual language spoken, a phenomenon called code switching. For example, in Soares, a small community of northeastern Italy, high in the Carnian Alps, a quite remarkable linguistic situation exists. 
The inhabitants use three different languages in their everyday life, a German dialect, Italian, and a Romance dialect, Friulian. Italian is the language of organized religion, and also that used in schools. Friulian is the language used by men in the local bars, and German is the language in home. A study of the ways in which these multiple languages are used are particularly important for language planning, a situation in which a government or education authority attempts to manipulate the linguistic situation in a particular direction. However, it is rare to see multilingual societies in which all speakers are proficient in all the languages spoken. Quite often, one language or simplified language is adopted as a common means of communication. A common language of this type is sometimes known as lingua franca. Adopting lingua franca is not the only solution to the problem of communication between groups of people speaking different languages. In some cases, a pidgin develops. A pidgin is a restricted language system which arises to fulfill essential communication needs among people with no common language. It's no one's first language, therefore it doesn't have its own native speakers. If someone then acquires a pidgin as a first language, perhaps because of intermarriage between people whose only common language is the pidgin, the language has then become a creole. Once it has become a creole, the system tends to develop rapidly and is likely to be indistinguishable from a full language. In some circumstances, however, if creole is spoken in an area where the base language is also used, the creole can be decreolized because there may be social pressure on the creole speakers to speak the base, which often has more prestige. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for watching, stay healthy and happy, and see you next time.